Now you also need to know about sex, male and female, how uh, your sex is determined, because it's a little bit different. It's not coded for by one gene, it's actually coded for by an entire chromosome. Now men have an X and a Y chromosome, and women have an X and an X chromosome, two X's. So you, you need to be able to draw a Punnett square for this, a genetic diagram for this as well. Females can only pass on X's because they only have X's to give. Males have an X and a Y. So it's actually the sperm which will determine whether you end up having a boy or a girl. It's always uh, quite a nice uh, moment of irony when you think about Henry VIII chopping off all of his wives' heads for not giving him a son, when actually it was always down to his sperm, uh, which determined whether he had a boy or a girl. So again, we set out our Punnett square in the same way. We put the phenotypes, the phenotype in this case is male and female. And then we show the genotypes, X and Y and X and X. Again, the sperm could be an X sperm or a Y sperm. The mother can only pass on X in her eggs. We put them into the Punnett square and we show that we get our 50, 50, two girls and two boys. So that's why there is always a half a chance of you having a boy or a girl. Now again, that's just a probability. You could have five children and they may end up all being girls, but each time you get pregnant, there is a 50-50 chance. Knowing how inheritance works allows you to interpret special family tree diagrams which show genetic disorders, and these are called family pedigree charts. So here's a family pedigree chart for something called alcaptonuria. Now alcaptonuria is a recessive genetic disorder in which amino acids are not properly broken down. And the effect in people who have this genetic disease will have darkened skin, brown urine, and may suffer from joint damage. Now, you can see that the individuals one and two are the sort of the, the older, oldest people in this diagram. Um, we've got a male and a female. Uh, the squares are male, the circles are female. There's a key given to you for these family pedigree charts. And also you can see that if they are blue, that means they're affected, and if they're yellow, that means they don't have the disease. Now we know it is recessive because we've also can see in the affected circles and squares um, that there is a little a, little a. So we can see that it's um, caused by these uh, homozygous recessive alleles. But you could also work it out from what the parents have and what the children have, whether as a dominant allele or recessive allele. Now can you work out what the genotypes would be for individuals one, two, and three? So number one, let's start with that. Well, we know they're affected. And if they're affected and it's a recessive disease, they must have two small a's because it's recessive and you have to be homozygous recessive to have the disease. Number two, so they had children with number one. Uh, they had one child with the disease, little a, little a, so therefore number two must have little a in order to pass it on to that child. So parent two must be big A, little a. And also we know that they don't have the disease and therefore they can only either be big A, big A or big A, little a. But looking at their children, we know it must be big A, little a. And also for number three, it has to be big A, little a for the same reason. They don't have the disease and they definitely pass on little a to their children. So they can't be homozygous dominant. So you should be able to interpret these pedigree charts and work out what genotypes are and whether diseases are recessive or dominant based on the information and the key that you are given.